My name is Megan Hansen, and I have decided to do my presentation today on Frida Kahlo. Her full name after being married was Frida Kahlo de Rivera. She was born July 6, 1907, and died July 13, 1954. She was born in Mexico City, Mexico, in her family home, and it is now referred to as the Blue House. It is actually now a museum to honor Frida in Mexico City. At the age of six, Frida did get polio. This caused significant growth damages to her right leg. This later caused her to have a lot of pain, and it also caused her to walk with a limp. It is important because it's actually sort of inspiration for a lot of her paintings, as you will see later on in the presentation. Um, she was praised by feminists and people living in Mexico for perfectly capturing the culture and daily life of Mexico, but also for what it was like in particular to live as a woman in Mexico during her time. Her career started when she was actually just a teenager. She got into a life-threatening car accident, and she was bedridden and in a full body cast, and so the past the time, she actually started painting. She has said to created over 200 paintings and sketches during her time. In these paintings, she captures life experiences, pain, relationships, and self-discovery. She was married twice to a fellow artist. His name was Diego Rivera. He inspired many of her paintings, um, both like through love and pain. Um, in 1932, she began to transfer her work into more realistic and surrealistic styles. Frida moved around a lot with her husband and ended up in the United States in the 1930s. They lived in California, New York, and several other places. In 1939, her and Diego divorced, but they were reunited again in 1940. In 1950, she was diagnosed with gangrene. This made her bedridden once again, but she still kept creating works. And even in 1953, she opened her own exhibit in Mexico. So this is a famous quote from Frida. She said, I paint self-portraits because I'm so often alone, because I'm the person I know best. And Frida Kahlo was actually kind of known for just creating a ton of self-portraits. Most of her paintings are actually self-portraits. This first painting that we're going to look at is called Self-Portrait in a Velvet Dress, and this was created in 1926. Um, I chose this one because it is one of her earliest self-portraits. Um, during this time, she was in a relationship with a man named Alejandro. Um, she created this pa uh, portrait in hopes of regaining some affections from Alejandro. Their relationship was kind of struggling, and they were living in two different places, so they were writing letters back and forth. Um, in a particular letter, she wrote to him promising to better herself for him, and also mentioning that she was going to create this painting and send it to him. Um, by creating this patient, painting, she wanted to capture her beauty, and she hoped that if she did that and sent it to him, it would um, regain his um, affection and capture his attention. This next painting was painted in 1939. It is called The Two Fridas, and as you recall earlier, I mentioned that in 1939, her and Diego actually got a divorce. Um, so she created this piece after her divorce to show the two different sides of herself. She said the painting represented her desperation and loneliness that she felt without Diego in her life. One Frida, which is the Frida in this white dress, is the Frida that Diego loved. She's in a very traditional Mexican dress, but as you can see, her heart is kind of like open and broken. And um, also she is holding scissors. Um, we will find out later on in this next painting kind of that the scissors do hold some significance to her and Diego's relationship. Um, the second is the new Frida, whose heart has been healed, as you can see. She's dressed in the clothing that she desires. Um, she's no longer dressing to fit the Frida that Diego loved. As you can see, the two Fridas are kind of holding hands in peace, um, so they're existing within each other. Blood is dripping over the dress of one Frida, whose artery seems to have been severed. And as you can see, it's severed, and the new Frida is actually holding the tool that kind of severed the artery. Um, so the blood and the stormy skies in the background help to further convey her inner pain associated with losing Diego. So this next one was in 1940, and so that is when they did get back together, but this is still kind of um, her feelings towards the divorce. Um, this one is called self-portrait with cropped hair. Um, this painting is different from many of her other self-portraits that she's created. In this painting, she's actually, as you can see, in men's clothing. In all of her other paintings, Frida uses a more feminine approach to express herself, and she um, paints herself in like very feminine dresses. This painting was created after her and Diego divorced. It is said to represent the affair that occurred during their marriage. Um, one of the affairs was actually with her younger sister, so as you can imagine, that created a lot of pain for her. 
She painted herself in Diego's clothing, and she's surrounded by hair that she's actually cut from her own hand, and the scissors are in her hand, and that's the same scissors that were in the last piece. Um, the room is just very empty, and her face seems, like, serious, almost as if she's trying to capture her emotions of hurting and loneliness that Diego has brought to her. She's cut her hair because that is a thing that Diego said to have loved most about Frida. Um, she's painting herself with it removed to show her independence from Diego and the strength that she has in order to cut him out of her life. Above her head, she's painted lyrics and translated these lyrics to see, see if I love you, it was for your hair, now you're bald, I don't love you anymore. This next painting was also done in 1940. It is called self Portraits with Thorn Necklace and Hummingbird. Um, this painting is one of Frida's kind of well-known paintings. Um, it contains so much symbolism. The first thing that I noticed was the Thorn Necklace around her neck, and it is causing her to bleed, but she also still has like this serious face that is in a lot of her self-portraits. Um, this may help to show that Frida is slightly, silently hurting. She feels as though the pain is suffocating her, and that's why it's like wrapped around her neck. It's also supposed to allude, though, to the thorn worn by Jesus. Um, there's a hummingbird around her neck, but instead of it being colorful like we know hummingbirds to be, it is black and lifeless. Many believe that since it's close to her heart, this actually is supposed to represent Frida herself. She feels as though her life is lacking color and beauty, and she feels almost lifeless like that bird around her neck. On her shoulder sits a black cat. Um, black cats, as we know, car carry the symbol of bad luck. On the opposite shoulder sits a monkey. Um, the monkey is in several of her portraits as well. And apparently Diego gave her a monkey as a pet. But the monkey is also a symbol of the devil. Above her head there are some butterflies and dragonflies. Um, these are supposed to represent um, the idea of resurrection. Specifically the resurrection from her pain and suffering that she has felt during the divorce. Um, I felt this next painting was um, kind of interesting. She painted herself um, on a deer body, and it's called The Wounded Deer, and it was painted in 1946. It's supposed to capture the emotions of fear and disappointment. She painted herself as a wounded deer who's injured by several errors, as you can see, and it's like bleeding out about to die. Um, in the background of a painting, there's sort of a clearing. It makes it seem as though the deer was so close to safety, but it couldn't quite get there before it kind of got shot. During the time she made this painting, Frida was undergoing another spine surgery in hopes of stopping some of the back pains that she got from polio. Um, the surgery actually did not work, and it's supposed to represent the pain and disappointment that she felt. In the lower corner of the painting is the word karma, and you kind of can see it, but not really. Um, this is supposed to represent um, destiny and fate. She's trying to explain that even if she tries, she can't escape her fate of being in pain and sadness. Um, like she tried with the surgeries and stuff and she's still not working. This painting was later given to her friend Lena for a wedding present. Um, she attached a note that read, I leave you my portrait so that you will have my presence all the days and nights that I'm away from you. And I thought that was kind of interesting because it's so, such a dark painting. It's weird that she gave it to her friend as a wedding gift. So as I said, a lot of her paintings were self-portraits, but I decided to also choose some paintings that weren't self-portraits to so show some of her other works. So the first one that I chose is called What the Water Gave Me. Um, this painting was in 1938. Um, it's also been called What I Saw in the Water, but Frida called it What the Water Gave Me. This painting is sort of a timeline of Frida's life. Um, when asked about this piece, she said it's an image of passing time, about time, and childhood games in the bathtub, and the sadness of what happened to her in the course of her life. I chose this particular piece because it was different from any of her other paintings. Um, her other ones are very structured, and it's like a center focal point, and this one's sort of like chaotic, it's unstructured, it's messy, there's no main focus, um, and the other ones are not like that at all. Each image contains an important section of Frida's life, many of which appear in other paintings, as you'll see. So this next painting was created in 1938. It is called Girl with a Death Mask. This painting is supposed to represent Frida as a small child. They're guessing around the age of four. The mask she is wearing is actually a traditional Day of the Dead mask, um, and it is a mourning mask worn during this festival. And so as you know, the Day of the Dead is actually just a time in Mexico to honor your loved ones who have passed. Um, on this day also, the yellow flower that's in her hand is usually placed on the graves of those who have died. The little girl is alone in a field, and the painting as a whole um, kind of just gives off this sadistic feel. There's these two like super creepy masks that seem kind of inappropriate for a four-year-old to be around. Um, 
This painting is just kind of supposed to represent the idea of cruelty that awaits in her future life. It was actually given to one of her friends, but is now in the possession of a private collector in California. Um, most of her paintings are in museums, so I thought it was interesting that this one went to a private collector. So this is called Flower of Life or Flame Flower. It was painted in 1943. A lot of Frida's paintings were actually very sexual, so I just chose one painting to show you that. Um, this plant is supposed to represent the male and female sex organs, and it's supposed to represent like life sprouting out from these organs. So it's supposed to represent the process of reproduction that occurs between a man and a woman. This painting was titled Moses in 1945. Um, sometimes it is referred to as Nucleus of Creation. This was actually a commission piece that uh, Frida created. She was asked to create the painting based on the books Moses and Monotheism by Ford. It is said that she took inspiration for kind of how to create a mural from her husband Diego, who is a famous uh, muralist during her time. If you look closely, you will notice that there's a third eye on the baby's forehead in the middle. This represents the eye of wisdom. And actually the face is said to have been based on the face of her husband. Above the baby is a sun, but on either side of the sun are different like gods and heroes. Closer to the baby underneath the sun, there is the, a level where there's like some skeletons. Um, they are also surrounded by some hands. This is said to be kind of like the hands of death. All these images, though, seem to be rising out of the two tree trunks that are kind of dead in the two corners. Um, this is a symbol of the cycle that comes with life and death. According to Frida, the baby who is laying underneath, um, sort of in the middle, who is being um, dripped on, is a symbol of love. Frida made this comment about her painting. She said, I read the book once, started the painting with my first impression. Later I read it again, and I must confess I found my work to be most inadequate and quite different from the interpretation Ford analyzes so marvelously in his book Moses, but now there's no way I can change it. I kind of like to include that because I thought it was cool that she kind of like regrets some of her paintings. The last painting I've cho chosen to include is a political painting. It's called Marxism Will Give Health to the Sick, and it was created in 1954, so pretty close to the end of her life. Um, this political piece was created by uh, Frida and is said to have been created in order to benefit the revolution. She's trying to illustrate that we can be free from all the pains of life through Mar Marxism. As you can see, the background's kind of split. One side is like this green side, one side is this red side. So the green side is supposed to represent good, the red side is supposed to represent evil. Um, as you can see, there's like a dove over the world, almost as if we're living in peace on the green side, which is the good side. And then the red side, you can see that uh, it's an eagle being strangled and all that stuff. And so basically what they're saying is that Marxism is trying to push us to the good side, and that's why those hands are there. Um, as you can see, there's also some crutches. Um, those are supposed to represent the physical pain that Frida is feeling, and she's kind of letting go of them because Mar Marxism is like removing that pain for her. After creating this piece, she actually said, for the first time, I'm not crying anymore. And so I thought that was kind of interesting. So throughout this presentation, I kind of mentioned where some of her paintings ended up. But just in case you ever want to see any f paintings by Frida Kahlo, there is um, three different museums in Mexico City where most of her paintings are displayed. But she also has some at the New York Museum of Modern Art and at the National Museum of Women in the Arts in Washington, D.C. And then these are just my works cited. Thank you guys for listening.